Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the School of Personal Finance. In this video, we are gonna talk about bear markets. So now, if you are watching my YouTube channel, then odds are you are watching other financial advisors or other investment YouTube channels that are out there. And I'm sure you are seeing headlines and hearing about you know the coming bear market or the market correction or the upcoming crash in the stock market and all of these clickbaity types of headlines, which I really try to stay away from participating in. But in this video, I wanted to explain exactly what a bear market is, what it feels like to go through one, because odds are many of you watching this might have never gone through one before, and some ways that you could prepare your portfolio if you are worried about the markets and if you think that there is a bear market coming. All right, let's get to it. All right, so real quick, make sure to head over to schoolofpersonalfinance.com. Get on my email list if you are not on there already. Get the free download for the 15 numbers that you should be tracking to become great with money. Check out my one-on-one -on -one power sessions that I'm offering now and also the education center. All right, so what is a bear market and should you even care? So for definitions, I love to go over to Investopedia. So if we look up what a bear market is, we could see right here that a bear market is when a market experiences prolonged price declines. It typically describes a condition in which securities prices fall 20% or more from recent highs. All right, so basically what that means, it's when the price, and we usually measure this in the indexes, like the S&P 500 index or the NASDAQ index, when it drops from a recent high down 20% from that point. And it doesn't just have to be in the indexes, it could be in sectors like the financial sector or the energy sector or the technology sector. It could be in commodities like gold or Bitcoin. It could be in individual stocks like the big growth tech companies that have been you know, pretty much killed over the last three months. We could find many of them that are currently in bear market territory, meaning that they have gone down 20% or more from their highs. And you know, on that note, let's look at a quick little chart here showing some of these very high-flying growth tech stocks that did so well over the previous year, really over a year ago now, um, where in the last year, they have pretty much been getting beat to hell. And over the last three months, that has only accelerated. So if I show you a very quick chart right here, like this chart right here looks amazing. So look at these companies. We have Zoom, Peloton, DocuSign, Redfin, Teladoc, and DraftKings. These charts are, you know, nothing but up. So if we look, this is from a time period of September 2019 through February 2021, all right? So this was a year ago. This ended a year ago, all right? And we could look over that time period. I mean, Zoom was up 362% during that time. Peloton, 470%. DocuSign, 256%. It just goes on and on. DraftKings, 454%. These stocks were on fire. If you were holding these stocks, it was happy days for you. Then if we go ahead and we change this, from February 2021, so a year ago, up until today, Zoom is down 60%. Peloton has gotten crushed. It is down 80%. DocuSign, 45%. Redfin, 60%. Teladoc, 70%. And DraftKings is down 57%. So these stocks, high flyers, and then they just have been annihilated over the last year. So it's been a tremendous roller coaster ride if you have owned these stocks and it's recently been nothing but pain. So these stocks, they would be considered to be in a bear market right now. And we don't know if they're ever going to come back. Now, if we take a step back and we look at the indexes, they have had a terrible January, right? But it hasn't been anything like those high growth tech companies. But if we look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ hit a low of being down around 15% from its highs just recently at the end of January. And we've had a little bit of a rebound. So I'm filming this. It's February 2nd right now. I'm going to post it on my birthday, which is February 4th, which will be Friday. But the market has had a little four-day rally as of right now. So making a little bit of a comeback. Will that be sustainable? Nobody knows. But the NASDAQ was down about 15%. And the S&P 500 was down about 10% before this rally. So when the market is down 10%, we use the term correction. We call it a market correction. So once we reach 10% from its recent highs, we call that a market correction. So the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones all recently had a correction. And we just don't know how long it's going to last. And we don't know if it is going to turn into a bear market where we go down 20% 
from the recent highs. So now the main reason that you're hearing so much noise around bear markets and corrections is because we just really haven't had them as often as we used to. The market has really done great for the last, the last decade. So here's a chart that I came across somewhere online and it's just such a great infographic that I wanted to share it with you. If we take a look at this, we could see the average bull market. Now this is going back to 1950. So the average bull market, these are the blues, the bull markets, 279% total return on the average bull market and they last about six years. And as we can see, this most recent bull market, which started in 2010, basically, has gone, you know, it's really continued to today. So this chart, it ends right around when coronavirus took the market down. So this is only through April of 2020. So we could see this red right here was when coronavirus hit that we went into a quick bear market. It was actually very quick and we pretty much had a V-shaped recovery and bounced right back. So it has been a very long bull market. And the only other time that really compares to it was back in the early 90s up through the dot-com bubble, up through the year 2000. And then we had the dot-com bubble, which is this red right here. And then right here was the Great Recession in 2009 and 2010. So as we can see, bull markets typically last much longer than bear markets. But the bear market, eventually, it is coming for you. We are going to have another bear market. And a lot of people think that that time is coming now. So we could also see right here, the average bear market is only four 14 months and the typical drawdown is 33 percent from the highs so that is painful that's a third of your portfolio so i thought this chart really just put things into perspective as you can see that we have much longer periods of stocks going up of being in a bull market than we do of being in the bear market now another awesome chart that i wanted to show you is from 1928 up until now the annual returns of the s p 500 with also showing the lowest point the maximum drawdown during that calendar year we could see that we've had a lot of positive years right these negative years have really just been 2009 and then during the the dot-com bubble um, but look at the drawdowns look at the little red dots so even in years when the market was positive so for example if we look at the year 2020 when the coronavirus started the market ended up around 20 percent for the year which you would think you know is awesome but if we look at this little red dot down here, we could see that there was a point in time during that year when we had a drawdown of basically close to 40%, right? Like 37% that the market was down at the lows and then it bounced right back. But you can see in other years, I mean, we could have big positive years where at some point during the year, the market was down 10% or 8%, 15%. So it's very typical to have corrections in the market. I mean, one big reason that people are very worried about the market and the economy in general is because there is a shift in policy right now. Interest rates have basically been zero. There's been free money out there for a long time. And when there's free money, it gives people incentive to borrow money and take that money and invest it. Or if the government is sending you free money, you take that money and you buy risk assets. You buy stocks, you buy Bitcoin, you buy things that you're looking to speculate on and invest and make more money. But when that 0% interest rate is gone, when there's a cost to borrowing money and you're no longer getting free money, then people dial it back. We want to take risk off a little bit. You hear the term, you know, don't fight the Fed or the Fed is your friend, or you've always heard that the Federal Reserve Chair, like Jerome Powell, that they are the put option, that they are the backstop in case the markets start going down, they step in and they save the day. But a lot of people believe that those days are done, that inflation is a very big worry and that the Federal Reserve is backed into a corner and they just cannot accommodate like they have in the past. So it's a shift in policy. All right, so now let's look at these data points real quick, and then I'll share with you some ideas that you might be able to do with your portfolio to protect against a bear market. Now, if you watch my stuff, you know that I am not in the prediction game, and I'm not in the market timing game. I never pretend to think that I know better than anybody else about where this market is going. But with that said, I also don't like to just stick my head in the sand and pray. I do like to try to make strategic moves, even if it's on a smaller scale or with a smaller portion of my portfolio, to try to position myself just for any type of market scenario. So first, let's look at this website from the Hartford Funds that I found online, which just had a bunch of great information in here. 
about bear markets. So this one highlighted right here, bear markets are normal. So there have been 26 bear markets in the S&P 500 index since 1928. And there have also been 27 bull markets. And stocks have ri risen significantly over the long term. So yes, obvious, stocks have gone up significantly over the long term. And then if we look at this next data point here, every 3.6 years, so that's a long-term average frequency between bear markets. And then number four right here, bear markets tend to be short-lived. So the average length of a bear market is 289 days or 9.6 months. So significantly shorter than the average length of a bull market, which is 2.7 years or 991 days. And I'm jumping around a little bit here, but if we look at number two, stocks lose 36% on average in the bear market. So that is painful. So you have to be prepared for every five years or so to lose 36% of the equity piece, the stock piece of your portfolio. So that is common, even though we haven't experienced it much over the last 10 years or so. That is common. It's something that you have to be mentally prepared for that to happen to you. Then number nine, this is a good point here. So assuming a 50-year investment horizon, you could expect to live through 14 bear markets, give or take. And that leads us into point number 10 right here. Bear markets can be painful, but overall markets are positive a majority of the time. So over the last 92 years of market history, bear markets have comprised only about 20.6 of those years. So put another way, stocks have been on the rise 78 percent of the time now with any bear market when you're going through it you always feel like well this is the one that's going to take us out this one is different than all the other ones especially 2009 it felt like the world was just coming to an end and you know people kind of feel that way right now all right so now let's wrap this up by talking about how this could affect your investment portfolio some changes that you could consider making now obviously none of this is investment advice it so much depends on your personal situation on your time horizon on your risk tolerance all of those things but when we go into a bear market some things that you might want to consider are number one raising some cash right so when we are risk off it could bring down all asset classes there might be nowhere to hide so even things that you think might be a hedge against like inflation like bitcoin or gold when people are selling they sell everything they do not discriminate and all asset prices could go down so having some cash on hand might be a good idea by no means am i saying you know sell out of all your positions and go into cash so that you could take advantage of lower prices in the market because nobody could play that game it's very difficult to time it and you could be very very wrong and then you're left holding cash for a long period of time but to have some cash not a bad idea now a second thing to consider if we are going to go into a bear market or a recession or a prolonged period of lower rates of returns is gold so now again not investment advice at all but i do personally own some gold as a small piece of my portfolio now if we look at a chart right here gold if we look at september of 2011 gold was around 1850 dollars an ounce so that is a little bit over 10 years ago and that's basically where we are right now we're a little bit below that i mean gold did make a new high back here back in around august of 2020 but if you bought gold 10 years ago then you've pretty much gone nowhere but that doesn't mean that it can't have a very good 2022 we just don't know another investment that could make sense in this environment that at least might give you some stability so that you're not overly exposed to high risk assets are treasury inflation protected bonds it's not like you're going to hit home runs being in this but it just might be a little bit of an inflation hedge and somewhere to go where you're not going to get clobbered if all risk assets get sold off big time over the next few years now bonds in general are a scary place to be when we're in a rising interest rate environment so I don't love the idea of holding bond funds or long-term bond funds even middle duration types of bond funds because as interest rates go up the value of the bonds go down with inflation at seven percent you know you're gonna have a negative real rate of return in these bond funds so for me personally I would probably rather have cash than hold these bond funds but that doesn't mean that there are no bonds that are worth holding on to like I just, as I just said with tips that might be something that you could find a place for in your portfolio um, another one would be floating rate bond funds where rising interest rates actually will increase the yield on these types of funds the return on these types of funds so they could be a good place to hide if we see interest rates 
go up a little bit. But obviously, all these investments, they come with risk. None of them are a sure thing. None of them are guaranteed in any way. So any of these pieces to a portfolio, they hold risk to them. I mean, cash holds risk to it, right? If you're holding cash right now and inflation is 7% and we continue to print money in this world, then you're losing money on your cash. There's no doubt about it. Even though you don't feel like it, you are losing purchasing power on your cash right now. So in a big bear market, in a big recession, in a big risk off environment, there's just nowhere great to hide. I mean, Bitcoin is another piece that I haven't really talked about. And I just feel like it hasn't been tested yet going through these environments. We thought that Bitcoin would be a great inflation hedge, but it hasn't proven itself as that yet. There's not a long, a long enough track history. But full disclosure, I do own Bitcoin and it has been painful over the last couple of months. But I do continue buying a little bit of Bitcoin and dollar cost averaging in and I'm holding it for the very long term. So I'm not looking at the day-to-day -day price volatility. All I'm looking at as an opportunity to maybe add to my cryptocurrencies in general. So all of these things when building out a portfolio, you wanna look at, but you wanna understand what the risks are. And if we go into a very big risk-off environment, then I think crypto is gonna get beaten up as well. So it's hard. It's hard to know where to go if we go into a bear market and a recession. It's just hard to not lose money in those types of scenarios. But it's a mistake to say, you know what, I know we're going into a recession, I'm, I'm taking all my money out of everything, and I'm just going to cash, because you might be wrong, right? Odds are, you're going to be wrong, at least one way or the other, the timing on the way out or the timing on the way back in. It's just so hard to get those things right. I hope that you found this one helpful. Please make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this one. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.